Hello friends, this video on motion part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, we will start with two new quantities. We will introduce two new quantities that is speed and velocity. So let us now introduce these two new quantities that is speed and velocity. So why are we studying these two quantities now? In our last section, we talked about path length and displacement. So why did we study them? Because they talks about the position of the object, right? They talks about how much distance the object has covered in a specific period of time. Now, these two quantities will talk about the rate of change of position. That means the rate at which the object is moving. You would have often heard of things like, um, I walk faster than you or Ram runs faster than Shah. What do I mean when I say that somebody runs faster or somebody runs slower? So fast or slow basically describes the speed of that person. I mean the rate at which the person is moving, the rate at which the position is changing with time. So here we will talk about these two quantities, speed and velocity, which actually talks about the rate of change of position with time. So let us first talk about speed. What is speed? It is the rate at which an object covers distance. So speed, as I mentioned in the previous slide, that it is a scalar quantity. That means in order to define speed, only magnitude is enough. If I say that uh, there is a boy who runs at a speed of 2 kilometers per hour. So I do not really need to mention any direction that in which direction he runs. Just the magnitude is enough to describe speed. So speed will tell us how fast or how slow an object moves. So how do we mathematically calculate speed? It is the path length divided by time taken, right? So speed is equal to the total distance covered divided by time taken. So speed is a scalar quantity. So it is dependent on the scalar quantity path length. So speed is equal to path length by time taken. And what is the SI unit for speed? Now since speed is equal to path length, what is path length? SI unit of path length is meter. Time taken is second. Therefore, the SI unit for speed is meter per second. It is also sometimes described in terms of kilometers per hour. Now, let us look at velocity. What is velocity? It is again the rate at which an object changes its position. Now, velocity is a vector quantity. It is nothing but speed with direction. Right? So, it is a vector quantity. Since it is a vector quantity, so it is dependent on the vector quantity. What was the vector quantity? It was displacement. So, velocity is equal to displacement divided by time taken. So, the way there is a difference between displacement and distance, similarly, there exists a difference between speed and velocity. Speed is a scalar quantity. Vel velocity is a vector quantity. Speed is given by the total distance covered divided by time taken and velocity is given by the total displacement divided by time taken. Let us take an example and understand speed and velocity clearly. Let us take the same example of the small boy. Let us suppose we have the small boy who is right now at rest at his home. Now let us look at this example. Let us suppose that the distance between the house and the McDonald's, this entire distance is 2 kilometers. So let us suppose this distance is 2 kilometers. Now this boy starts cycling. He starts from his home, reaches McDonald's and then again takes a U-turn and comes back to his home. Right? The same story again that maybe he missed his wallet and so he has to come back to his home. So in this case, what is the total that we will try to calculate the speed in this case. So what would be the speed in this case? Speed is nothing but the distance traveled divided by the time taken. So in this case, what is the distance traveled? Plus 2 kilometers while going, again 2 kilometers while coming back. So total distance traveled is 
4 km time taken let us suppose that he took 1 hour to go to mcdonald's and again he took 1 hour while coming back so what is the total time taken that is 1 plus 1 2 hours so it comes out to be 2 kilometers per hour so 2 km per hour is the total speed in this journey so this journey included home to mcdonald's and then again take a u-turn and come back to home so in this case what do we see we see that the speed comes out to be two kilometers per hour right now let us look at the same thing in terms of the distance time graph now for the same scenario let us try to plot the distance time graph. What is distance time graph? It is a graph where you plot distance along the y-axis and time along the x-axis. Now, what does this graph actually depict? It actually tells us how the distance varies with time, right? Now, in this case, what do we see? The distance increases, that means the distance covered by the boy increases as the time increases, right? In uh, uh, we saw that the speed came out to be 2 kilometers per hour, correct? So in one hour, this boy was gradually, I mean, traveling, covering some distance and finally it covered some 2 kilometers in one hour, correct? It is something like that. So in this case, if you plot this distance time graph, it comes out to be something like this. That is the distance increases with time. So in this case, the slope of this line gives us the speed of the object because when the distance increases linearly with time that means as time increases distance also increases proportionately in that case we will get a graph like this that means when time is one second distance covered is one meter when time is two seconds distance covered is two meters similarly when time is two seconds distance covered is two meters again when time is three seconds distance covered is three meters so that is how we will get a straight line so this kind of line we will get when equal distance is covered in equal intervals of time now a plot of the, so this graph basically tells us how much distance is covered with respect to time so slope of this line will give you the speed of the object so slope of this line will tell you the speed of the body right now how do you calculate the slope of a straight line slope of the straight line is given by tan theta so in this case the slope is given by tan theta and how do you calculate this tan theta it is nothing but from this triangle, you can say that if this is A, this is B and this is O. So from this triangle, you can say that tan theta is equal to AB divided by OB. Right? So let us look at the same example graphically. So in this case, we see that it covers 4 kilometers. Let us suppose this distance is given in kilometers and this time is given in hours. So from this graph, we see that it covers 4 kilometers in four hours right so ab is four ob is also four so it comes out to be one kilometer per hour so this is the speed of the body so in this case we say that it covers one kilometer per hour because in this case they have considered that two kilometer is the distance between um, the home and the mcdonald while going it takes two hours, while coming back it again takes two hours. That is what is the assumption in this scenario. So you understood how do we actually, what is speed? Speed is nothing but distance covered per unit time. So speed is equal to distance by time. So if you want to determine speed, you need the distance time graph. So from distance time graph, the slope of the graph gives the speed of the body. Right? So let us now talk about position time graphs. Well, I did not discuss much in detail about uh, the slope of the graph because I, I mean, that, that will be something which will be discussed in your mathematics. I am I'm, I'm sure that you have already learned about the slope of a straight line. Even if you have not learned about it, you will learn it in your mathematics lesson. So for now, you should only understand that the slope of a straight line is given by tan theta and tan of theta is equal to perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. So if you want, I can just 
tell it in brief here. So slope is given by tan theta. And what is tan theta? Tan theta is nothing but perpendicular divided by b. So this is the definition of tan theta. So tan theta is defined in the right angle triangle. So in that triangle, the ratio of the perpendicular to the base is known as, is, is what determines tan theta. So now that we have talked about distance time graph, let us talk about position time graph. Now what is position time graph? Distance time graph tells us about the distance covered with respect to time. Position time graph will talk us about the position of the object with time. That means how the position is changing with time. Now what is the difference between distance time graph and position time graph? Distance time graph talks about the path length or the distance. Position time graph talks about the displacement. It is not bothered about which exact path did the object follow. It is only bothered about the position of the object. That is what is displacement, right? Because displacement is only bothered about the initial position and final position. So that is why the graph which is plotted for displacement time is also known as position time graph. So let us take the same example, the boy starts from his home, goes to McDonald's and then comes back to his home. So in this case, how would the plot look like? In case of distance time graph, how was the plot? It was like a straight line, right? Because the distance covered was irrespective of the direction because the distance time graph was not dependent on direction. But in this case, direction also plays a role. So how will the graph look like? It will look somewhat like this. So here y axis denotes position, x-axis denotes time. So what happens in this case? Initially, let us suppose the distance between the home and McDonald's is 2 km. So time taken to reach McDonald's is 2 hours. Again, time taken to come back to home is 2 hours. Now for the first 2 hours, you see that the graph increases like this. That means the position increases with time. Now at this point, the position is at 2 kilometers and time is at 2 hours. So the position is at this point. Now as the position changes, when the position is 1 kilometer, maybe the position of the object is somewhere here. When it is 1.5, it is somewhere here. When it is 2, it is here. So this denotes the position of the object with increase in time. Now once it reaches this point, what happens? The object starts moving in the opposite direction. So since here we are talking about displacement, so direction plays a role because displacement is a vector quantity. So what will happen in this case? The direction gets reversed and that is why again the position of the object changes with increase in time. So in this case also you see that as the time increases, the position of the object now again changed from 2 till 1.5, 1, that means it, earlier it was at 2, again from 2 it came to 1.5, it came to 1, it again came to 0 0.5 and then again it reached 0. So that is how the position of the object is changing, right? So when we plot the position time graph, it would be somewhat like this. But when we plotted the distance time graph, we were not bothered about the position of the object at each instant. We just wanted to know the total distance that has been covered. So that is why it was not dependent on direction. So now is it clear to you how did we plot the position time graph in this case? So the same scenario has been plotted in two different ways because in one we are, dis uh, we are representing the distance versus time and in the other we are representing the position versus time. Now let us see what does the slope of the position time graph depict. The slope of the distance time graph gave us speed. So now, from our common sense, we can say that on, us, on similar lines, the slope of this position time graph will give us a velocity because position is something which is dependent on direction because position is nothing but the displacement we are talking about. So displacement is dependent on, velo uh, is dependent on direction. Displacement is a vector quantity. That is why the slope of the gra graph of this graph it will be nothing but velocity. So in this case, how do we calculate velocity? Here we actually have two straight lines. This is the first line and this is the second line. So what do we do? How do we calculate the slope? First we calculate the slope of this line, then we calculate the slope of this line. So the 
total slope will be slope of this plus slope of this. So what do we get here? So in this case, let us try to calculate the slope. Let me call this as line 1. This we call this as line 2. So slope of line 1 will be equal to tan theta. So tan theta, let me call this as theta 1. So this will be tan theta 1 which will be equal to perpendicular. This is the right angle triangle. So which is the perpendicular? This is the perpendicular. Which is the base? This is the base. So this will be 2 by 2. That is 1 kilometer per hour. So this is the slope of this line. Now on similar lines, let us try to calculate the slope of line 2. So slope of line 2 will be equal to tan of so in this case this will be tan of which angle this angle because every time you should measure the angle from the same way so this angle so let me call this angle as theta 2 so this will be equal to minus tan of theta 2 because in this case the angle is in the opposite direction right here theta 1 was measured from this axis so here theta 2 should also be measured from this axis so that means it comes out to be minus tan theta 2 because theta 2 will be nothing but so here theta is nothing but this angle that is 180 minus theta 2 it comes out to be minus tan theta 2 so this is equal to minus tan theta 2 will be p by b again so this is again 2 and this distance is again 2 so this will be minus 2 by 2 that is equal to minus 1 kilometer per hour so these are the two slopes therefore what will be the net slope so net slope will be equal to slope 1 plus slope 2 so that is equal to 1 minus 1 which is equal to 0 therefore the velocity is equal to 0 in this case now why the velocity becomes 0 in this case now we can prove the same thing non-graphically as well so here by with the help of the position time graph i showed you the velocity becomes zero in this so now let us look at what we have studied so far we studied that what what was velocity velocity is nothing but displacement per unit time now in this case what is my displacement the uh, boy starts from home, he goes to McDonald's and again comes back to home. So my initial and final positions are the same. That is why displacement is equal to zero. So zero upon time, that is equal to zero. So the velocity in this case is anyways equal to zero because the displacement is zero as the initial point and the final point is the same. So this is, with this we will conclude our discussion on speed and velocity. So what all did we study in speed and velocity? Speed and velocity tells us about the rate of change of position of an object. That means how much distance an object covers with time. So when I talk of speed, it is the total distance covered in a specific amount of time. So it is a scalar quantity. When I talk of velocity, it is the rate of change of position with time. So it is given by displacement per unit time and it is a vector quantity. Now graphically a distance, the slope of a distance time graph gives us speed and the slope of a position time graph gives us velocity. Right? Okay. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.